Good morning. <laughs> Daisy. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to One Million Cups, Oklahoma City. We're excited to have you. Um, we're also excited to be one of the events for this week's or uh, this year's Oklahoma City Minority Enterprise Development Week. So we've had yay! We've had a lot of great events taking place. Um, we are kind of working in partnership with a number of different organizations that everyone can feel welcome to um, work with alongside. Um, we're excited to have Tango PR today who is streaming our event. Um, that will be on our Facebook page for One Million Cups that I'll share once I sit down. And then <laughs> uh, also on the Oklahoma City Minority Enterprise Development Week uh, Facebook page. So um, we do have some amazing sponsors of the week as a whole. So um, we do want to make sure that if you know of any of these organizations or they're new to you, feel free to check those out. Um, one Million Cups is part of the Kauffman Foundation out of Kansas City with the goal of having, you know, One Million Cups is what it takes to really get a business up and running. And so with One Million Cups of coffee being um, had throughout the United States on Wednesdays at 9 a.m., um, the hope is communities like us are helping our startups and businesses to thrive because we know it's lonely and so we're all here to help so our, our two presenters today don't be so nervous this is a nice supportive group of people um, we do have uh, coffee provided by Dunlap Cotting, who is our host today. Um, we have donuts provided by Dia. <laughs> donuts by Dia. Uh, <laughs> um, we have a couple of organizers of our One Million Cups chapter. So it's myself, Susan Maureen, and Dia Ghosh. And so if you have um, any interest in presenting at a future One Million Cups, please let us know. We would love to have you. Or if you just want to always join us on the second Wednesday of every month, you can come here um, and we'll be here with free coffee and some sort of pastry and um, great stories from the awesome things happening in our community. So um, just kind of some general information for everyone. Um, the way that we have the presentations is our presenters have about 10 minutes to tell you about their story. It's not a pitch, it's a presentation about what they're working on, how they got there, what they're doing. And then we open it up to all of you for 15 to 20 minutes to let you ask questions about their business, provide any support um, for them. And then we always end it with um, how can we support our entrepreneurs? And so then they will tell us that as well. Um, so please hold your questions till after their presentation. Um, restrooms are down the hall if you need those. <laughs> um, and we'll do our best to kind of be in and out over the next hour because we know you're all busy people. So thank you again for coming. So first we're gonna have M, and she is gonna be presenting her company with her partner as well. So let me get some of the, some of the switched over real quick. All right, and then when we have questions, we do have a separate mic we'll pass around, so make sure you do utilize the mic so that they can hear you on the live stream. So, welcome. Thank you. Good morning. This is my handy helper and my fiance. We're getting married next month. So, yeah. <laughs> so, first, I have a Q&A for you guys. How many of you have been camping? All right. How many of you are intimidated by the idea of camping? Anybody? Okay, I thought so. Okay. <laughs> How many have been glamping? How many know what glamping is? All right. Um, how many of you like music festivals? Anyone ever tried yoga? Do you know what fast fashion is? A few of you. Uh, anybody compost their scraps? A few. All right. Uh, who likes to take a <laughs> who likes to take a long hot shower? Uh huh. Who knows how many gallons of water costs a free shower for one minute? The answer is two and a half gallons. So an eight minute shower is twenty gallons of water. Just for your information. And I take hot showers at least once a month, and I don't even time them. So it's okay. Um, who knows what a native healing ceremony is? Anybody? Okay, and who has kids? And who gets a little bit sick when they think about how much it's gonna cost to take those kids on a vacation? 
<laughs> all right. So we are Greener Things Grounds. All of those topics actually come together with our concept. We want to scoot on through. We are a affordable, unique, minimalistic glamp ground, giving people the opportunity to come and enjoy a place to stay with some hints of environmental awareness and sustainability. Uh, so this is the slide I would use if I was presenting to investors to give them the reason why we need this affordable vacation. But I want to tell you my reasons. For one, I was a impoverished-ish mom for a long time with four kids, and vacations were just out of the question. So unless we were going with my parents and they were paying for everything, we just didn't really go very many places. Also, having four kids, I was buried in waste. You know, the big bins that you get, those weren't always enough for a two or for a one week period. So you're throwing away diapers and broken toys and even old clothes because, you know, babies don't leave clothes pretty when they're done with them. So I was buried in all of this and I had to figure out on my own, how do I learn to economize? And in that process, I had to learn about the environment, which is a part of becoming more sustainable, more eco-friendly. So I learned to swap out light bulbs, I learned to do all these things, but it all took me reading books and watching YouTube to figure out how to do all of this. So let's talk about camping for a second. I was in a camper. I always wanted to be a camper. My ex-husband was not a camper. Uh, but then enter this guy who grew up in Colorado, camping with his family. Um, with large groups of people, and I was like, please, please take me and my kids camping. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then my kids are more the nerdy, sciencey type. So taking them out camping the first couple of times was kind of interesting because they were like, ah. but now they're like mud men. They go out and they play in the mud, they climb the trees, they throw dirt, they go fishing. Um, and so because of COVID, camping has come up quite a bit. Um, and in 2021, first-time campers, half of them were actually exposed through the glamping process. So we have all of these statistics up here if you want to hear about them later, but camping is on the rise. Now, here's what we actually want to do. Now, glamp grounds are super cute, really fun, but does anyone know what ecotourism is? All right, a few of you know. So. Ecotourism essentially is travel with a focus on sustainability or the local economy. So if you were going to maybe Costa Rica to a rainforest and learned how they do water capture, learned how they build gardens, or learned how they live in you know, a smaller off-grid space, or maybe an African safari and going to a nature preserve, all of these would be considered part of the ecotourism. Now, the U.S. doesn't really have that. That's common throughout Europe, Asia, Central America, but the U.S., we, we like our posh vacations. We don't really want to go somewhere where they're going to teach us things. So we're going to do it in a subtle way. <laughs> All right. These are our inspirations. If you wanted to look them up, um, Tennessee Glamping, there are all these freaking cool geodomes. They're uh, vinyl covered, insulated with a big window. You can see outside. And the shape of the geodome holds wind, snow, hail, all of these really well. So they're actually really sustainable. They use them to build, like in Alaska, they'll put them on an ice cap and use them for their scientific study pods. So they can last quite a long time. And all of the glamp grounds that we found that use the geodomes stay booked pretty much year round. So we're going with the geodomes. Next slide, please. Uh, so this is the concept that we're wanting to create. We want you to come to a Greener Things Glamp Ground, and as soon as you get there, you're greeted by one of our hosts who will be living on site. You'll, they'll take you to your cabin or to your dome. You'll settle in. You can spend the afternoon in, maybe in a hammock reading a book. Maybe you want to go fishing. Maybe you want to go hiking or cycling. In the morning when you get up, there's a free participation for meditation and yoga, which would be led by our um, on-site hosts. 
and in the afternoon if you want to learn about gardening or composting they'll be there to teach you how to garden and maybe you'll learn how to build a little box on your back patio and just grow your own tomatoes or whatever it might be. Every one of our properties, we intend to have a sustainable, as close to net zero as possible cabin, and that'll be the communal cabin. And we'll be sneaky about drawing people in by making that the only Wi-Fi <laughs> on the property. So you'll come into the, into the communal cabin and uh, you'll understand how the solar panels work. We'll have information in there. We'll have information on our water capture system or our geothermal heating and cooling systems. And then our hosts also will be educated in all of this. We'll be partnered with everyone that we use so they can give you information on site or you can look through our website to have access to all of this. But essentially, we also want to build with hemp. So essentially, when you come in to check your email, you can look around, you can explore, you can see what it might feel like to maybe downsize or to maybe build yourself a cabin out of hemp. And you'll have information on how good hemp is, even when you harvest it, how good it is for the environment. Um, so that's what, that's what we want to create. But also, we want to have music events. So we want to have um, retreats. We want to offer our space to host your own family retreats or your own wedding ceremonies or whatever the case may be. Uh, that's what we're wanting to prepare. That's what we're preparing to offer for Greener Things. Next. This is what we have currently. We have 12 and a half acres in Holdenville with the adjoining lot of 10 acres belonging to a neighbor, but they've given us access for hiking. So essentially, we have about 23 acres altogether. Um, and we have, uh, it's on the Little River in Holdenville. So you have access to fishing if you want to bring kayaks or canoes. Um, you can, there's a bridge like two miles down river that you can kayak to or whatever. Um, right now, we have three air-conditioned bell tents, trying to figure out what we're going to do to keep them warm for the fall. Um, they are furnished. There's a queen, there's a queen air bed. There's a little dinette. You'll see all the pictures of that later. Um, the property also came with, we purchased this in April, but it also had um, RV hookups. There's water, electric, septic, um, all of those things. And we'll, we'll, you'll see pictures. All right. Let's scoot on through. So these are the bell tents that we have currently. So the air mattresses are on a frame. So when you arrive, there's not any bedding. You bring your own bedding. You'll want sleeping bags in the fall because it gets a little chilly. Um, on to the next. There's another one of our tents. Uh, you'll all have your own charcoal grill fire pit. This, so this is the interior of the cabin that we'll be remodeling. That pool table's a beast, so we haven't taken it out yet. <laughs> but the communal cabin does have a bathroom and shower and a little kitchenette. So if you are not comfortable with a shovel in the woods, we have a place for you to go. Um, it, we have a big campfire also that we can all sit around. We bring our friends out pretty often. And this is the grill master. He cooks every meal while we're there, and I don't, I don't know how to do anything. Uh, so we go out with friends pretty often. Um, it's, so, it's such a nice experience. This is the cabin currently, and it, yes, it looks like, yes, that. <laughs> but we, <laughs> we are, this was an old hunting cabin, but we are going to remodel it. So imagine that. Imagine the metal being painted black, and then we'll have laser-cut panels that are backlit on the outside. We'll have a new roof. This courtyard, all the metal will be torn down. And it'll be wood slats. It'll look really good once it's all done. That's also what we're planning to outfit with the solar and all of that. So this is the concept that we're wanting to create. We have a couple hammocks out there right now, but we want to have a hammock station. Actually, there's going to be a stage on top of it. It's going to be between these three giant trees. And that's where we'll have some live performances on top of that stage. We do have fishing offerings um, right now, but we want it to look like that. <laughs> uh, and in the seasonable weather, we'll have um, domes hanging in the trees. We'll have some tree tents out in the woods. Uh, so the larger domes, one of the things we want to do is to make it, I haven't been keeping a track on time, hopefully I'm good, um, is to make it affordable for families. So the larger domes will be, uh, sleep at least six people, there will be a loft bed above the bathroom kitchen area. Those will be 350 a night. Our smaller domes will sleep at least four people, they'll still be air conditioned and 
um, and they'll have a little bathroom in there and those we want to make those 150 nights so families can come and enjoy a full weekend for $300 bring your own food and cook it so you don't have to pay extra for all of those amenities and then you can enjoy the grounds that's what we want it to look like we want we want these geodomes out there so you can have all this beautiful view um, we'll have these little things posted everywhere telling you about what the five minute shower does for you how much it saves Next one, uh, squishing your toilet paper before you put it on the holder so it doesn't just fly off of the roll. You save a lot of toilet paper doing that. Um, this is actually sitting in the bathroom. <laughs> so when you're in there and have nowhere else to go, you can read all of these fun little facts about fast fashion and meatless Mondays and how bamboo saves trees. Um, so Greener Things Organization is going to be our nonprofit that is used to supplement Greener Things. We'll be able to use that to raise funds for all of our sustainable components. Um, we'll also want to use Greener Things to help families in need become more sustainable. So we'll have a lot of projects that we use our organization with. Um, we do have a growth strategy. We want to have one location fully completed in 2023. We want to move on to a second location probably within Oklahoma in 2024. In 2025, we want to start adding regional locations. And then in 2026, we want to be trying to double these locations annually to have at, a, we want 20, at least 20 across the lower 48. So that any family, uh, Greener Things will be a household name. You can drive within six hours and make it to any of our campsite and spend a week, full weekend with your family for at least $300 or as low as $300. So again, this is me, M. Claire, and Nels Anderson. He'll be the event specialist, because that's his background. I'm the business developer. I also want to introduce Greg, if you'll wave. I don't know, <laughs> Greg Jones, if you don't know about the SBDC, the Small Business Development Center, it is a free resource for entrepreneurs like myself. I reached out to Greg. He helped me build up my presentation. He helped me put together my business plan. He's introduced me to all kinds of bankers and investors and um, has been such an amazing source for me. And he gives great feedback where you're like, ah, oh, this looks like, uh, I can't say that word. <laughs> <laughs> He's there to say, no, this is great, this is great. So you get a cheerleader involved. Um, and that is basically all about greener things. There's a QR code if you want to scan. We have business cards to offer as well. But thank you so much for your time. And we're opening for Q&A. Anybody have any questions? When can I... Uh sign up to go <laughs> <laughs> that QR code it takes you to your, our website with all of our information and booking is on the first page yes it is chilly this time of year we're figuring out if we're gonna put stoves in there but you'll want sleeping bags <laughs> warm sleeping bags it's so nice during the day anybody else Hi, how will people find you? Like, is this an Airbnb thing? Is we, it like a camping mm -hmm. portal? We are on Airbnb and on Hip Camp. We are also an official campground through um, Travel OK. So most people are finding us through Travel OK. Any other questions? I have a question. Yes. Um, what barriers have you guys run into in specifically focusing on glamping here in Oklahoma and uh, in building your business? Uh, well, Oklahoma is a great place to camp, but a lot of us uh, more suburban interiors don't haven't tried it before. So even people don't even know what glamping means. So <laughs> a lot of people. So that's been the first thing. And then people think, oh, camping, that's so, no, thank you. There's bears, but there's not really, it's Oklahoma. <laughs> there's raccoons, <laughs> maybe. But we, we explain that what we're creating is an experience where you can be in the outdoors, but you don't have to set it all up yourself. 
But we will be doing things like his camping nickname is Big Daddy. <laughs> if, he, if you stand out, he's six foot six. He's a big boy. But all of his camping friends called him Big Daddy. But we'll do Big Daddy campouts where we'll invite families who've never experienced it. We'll teach you how to pitch a tent, how to build a fire, how to cook over the campfire. If you want to take a shovel in the woods, we'll tell, we'll tell you how to do that. So, <laughs> uh, so we'll do things like that. We'll also have, um, we'll be hosting events like a grown-up camp where you can come play tug of war, do beanbag race, or uh, whatever those sack races are called, and um, we'll play ghosts in the graveyard, and then we'll just party at night. No kids. No kids allowed. Um, so we'll have events like that that we're uh, going to be promoting and um, get, trying to get more people in and involved in our space. Got a question. Uh, for your first location, what are some things you did uh, in and around the local community? So we, we were pretty lucky when we closed on the property. There's a woman there who's a chairperson on pretty much every board in Holdenville in Hughes County. Um, so she got us involved with the Chamber of Commerce. They're really excited to have us out there. Um, we've been working and meeting with the local people. We'll be telling everyone where to go eat, where to go, you know, which liquor stores to go to. Um, it's really important for us that part of the ecotourism experience to involve, involve ourselves in the local communities. And as Greener Things grows, as the Sycamore specifically grows, we'll want to have the schools have opportunities to come do volunteer work out on our property. We want to do volunteer work in the schools. There's also a local prison that we're trying to figure out how we can get involved and help out there as well. Um, the products that you're using uh, for uh, the facilities, as in um, whatever infrastructure, is, uh, are you also procuring or sourcing these from the local communities? Are these products made by small businesses? I mean, I just think that's one of the ways you could also support the local communities and you know, um, integrate this into your ecotourism part. And so if you're doing something uh, that already, um, if you would want to share, if not, that's just, uh, just a thought. I've yes, put out there. absolutely. Like right now we're in beta. So we don't have a whole lot going on at the Sycamore yet. Just the tents are available. But our intention is to bring in locals. Maybe people make soap, maybe lawn care, um, maybe people who want to come out and present something for a weekend. We want to be working that way. Now once we have several Greener Things Glamp Grounds established, um, our hosts will be giving our hosts some equity in the property so they can take ownership. We want them to be involved in the local, cha local chambers of commerce. We want them to be hiring maybe local healers, massage therapists to come to the property and do their services there. We want them to be plugged in and involved in the local communities as well. Karina. Have you given any consideration to um, offering an option for your customers to um, buy carbon offsets for their trip from the city? <laughs> That's a really cool idea. And full disclaimer, I am exactly what I said I am. I'm a mom of four who's just figuring things out. <laughs> so having people come and be involved, um, I want to hire interns who like work in environmental departments and universities or whatnot to come and give us ideas, help make sure that we're doing the sustainability thing properly. But that's a fantastic idea, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Right. And that's something I'll have to watch a lot of YouTube videos about. <laughs> that's how that works in my world. Anybody else? Uh, yeah. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> with the push towards ecotourism, um, do you have a plan in action for land conservation? Um, I do not currently know. I'd like to, this is having a group like this to present to where I know a lot of you are forward thinking with sustainability. Getting those ideas in, getting people who want to help implement those ideas. Um, we're not greedy people. We want to be involving people as much as possible to help make this what it needs to be. Um, but it also needs to be uh, easily duplicatable. 
So it can't just be where we have one space that's completely custom because we're going to need to duplicate the concept as we want people to come have access and not be inundated by environmental concepts, but we want them to have hints of you could do this. You can maybe take your own grocery bags to the store. You can maybe, you know, get bamboo toilet paper. You can maybe try these things. Um, but yeah, that's, that is definitely something we have not thought of yet. Hi. Uh, what locations uh, are you hosting this? Is it limited to Oklahoma or <coughs> does it go out? Nope. For this one's in Oklahoma because we live here and we can get to it easily. It's an hour and a half away. Um, we're thinking about doing another one, maybe Beaver's Bend, somewhere else in Oklahoma, so that our first two concepts we have easy access to. But he's from the Denver area, so we want to do one in Colorado, we want to do New Mexico. We would like to have glamp grounds in all different types of um, locations, so by the ocean and the desert and the mountains, so people can decide the type of outdoor experience that they want to have. Hot springs. Hot springs. That's his big. He just wants a hot springs. <laughs> Anybody else? Um, I think you've laid out an amazing vision of what this could be like. What are some, what are the two or three first steps that you're working on right now and is there anything that any of us can do to help you with those? Well, securing funding is the big thing. I mean, I've got a 25-page business plan all laid out. I have, we have all of the construction lined up. We have everybody ready to go. I just sold my house. I'm currently houseless. If anyone knows of a four-bedroom, two-bath rental out there <laughs> that we can get into, he's selling his, he's been in cannabis for 25 years, and he's selling his business. So it looks like we're going to get an offer today. So we'll have enough to get maybe get a few domes started. But our whole project, the whole build out is, is about $400,000. We're actually working with an investor, an old friend of his right now, um, who's really excited about our project. So good vibes, prayers, whatever you do, that's going to be a big help for us. We'll take one more question. Good morning. My question is, is there currently a wait list? And if so, or if not, are you currently pre-selling um, experiences, even if it is available for next summer? Well, that is um, a great thought. A diff an investor friend of mine who we talked to was talking about doing the pre-sales. Um, it's a great idea. It makes me a little nervous on the delivery because we would definitely need the funding to be able to create that experience for the pre-sales. Now, um, there is not a wait list for the future concept. Right now, we have all three tents booked out all weekend. Most people are booking on the weekends. Um, but that's, I mean, booking through Airbnb or Hip Camp is pretty much the only advertising that we have going on right now um, because I, you know, ready, we need to get that full concept together. Because with the full concept, you're not just going and staying in a cool dome, you're going to be involved in the activities. There's a local lake you can go to for recreation as well. Um, but as far as pre-sales go, that would be a fantastic way to prove concept to an investors. And just I'm a little nervous about the delivery and, and all of that. So actually we are going to be, I'm putting a video together to do uh, some crowdfunding. So Kickstarter, Indiegogo, that type of stuff, um, where everything will go into an escrow account until we meet, <laughs> until we meet our full funding and then we can go ahead and be like, all right, here we go. All right, great questions. Thank right. you guys so much. Thank we have you. one more question for you, though. Yes. We always like to ask, what can the community do to support you in this endeavor? And you kind of answered that, but anything uh -huh. last, last point? Uh, well, sharing our information. I'm, I'm working on getting better with social media. We do have Instagram. Um, which is mostly what I'm using right now. I tried TikTok, but I really need my nine-year-old to do that for me. <laughs> so, but if you want to scan our QR code or if you want a card for me afterwards, posting about it on your social media, letting friends know, and come out and stay. Um, it's, it is such a, I, that's all I hear from everybody is how 
there's so much great energy out here. It's so peaceful out here. My kids got to go run around and get dirty. You just have to clean up after yourselves. That's the only thing I ask. <laughs> well, I think to Asa's point, I think if you wanted to do some pre-sales for like an adult weekend, it seems like there's a lot of people in this room <laughs> nodding their heads that if it's live music, we camp out for a night, we eat some good food, we focus on our mental health, which I know a lot of times we don't do. Um, I think you might get a lot of people in this room and all of our friends to say, we'll go out there for 48 hours. All so right. if you all book right. that now, I'm, I'm ready to buy a ticket. So. All righty, <laughs> sounds good, we'll be in touch. All right, thank you again, Em. <laughs> All right, everyone, before we get Janae up here, I do want to quickly ask if everybody could do a virtual check-in here where um, between us and the Kauffman Foundation, wanting to learn just a little bit more about who's in the room and um, how we can support people in that process. So um, I, I'll put it up afterwards as well um, in case you miss it in this process or you don't fill it all out, but we'd love to know a little bit more about you. All right, again, don't be shy if you want to grab another donut. Also, before you leave, if you want to grab another donut, please do it then too. <laughs> grab some more coffee. Thank you to Emily with Dunlap in the back who's making all the coffee for us. So. <laughs> Again, come with all these awesome questions like you guys just had. We do have a couple, we have about two, three seats in the front. If anybody would like to come sit down up here, you can. And Janae, will you take it from here? Okay. I'm going to start my timer to make sure I'm doing me. Hello, everyone. I'm about to talk about Big Ass Bag. <laughs> okay, so let's take it back to December of 2022. I had like a bunch of events. It was insane. But the very last one was a wedding. And what you see here is me and my youngest daughter, Ella. I was frantically online. I had my laptop open, 20 browser tabs. I'm looking for something for this little girl to wear to this wedding that matches mama. And I had Target open, and some shoes in Target. And then I have Kohl's open in the cute little jacket you see. And I just kept thinking this would be so much easier to compare and contrast everything I have if it was in one place in a big ass bag. So let's talk about traditional shopping. You go to the mall, the man walks in, he sees the mall, 
Yes, you see, the mission is to go to Gap and buy a pair of pants. But the man walks in, he identifies the store. He walks into the store, he identifies what he needs to buy. He makes the purchase, he leaves. Total time, six minutes, total cost, $33. And then we have the woman. She pulls up to the mall, she walks inside, she's like, oh my gosh, there's Hollister, there's American Eagle, there might be jeans on sale there. So she stops there to look at the jeans. And then she exits the store and maybe she sees Foot Locker and realizes that Johnny needs a pair of tennis shoes. So let's stop and get Johnny's shoes too, because he needs those. At the end of it, the total time spent is three hours and 26 minutes, and the total cost is $876. Um, I kid about that, but this is traditional shopping. Unfortunately, though, right now, online shopping is becoming the main way people shop. So the setting has changed, but the way that women shop has not. <laughs> so the problem really is that traditional online shopping really skips a step integral to the way women shop. We like to browse and consider many items before we finalize our purchases. In 2021 alone, guys, U.S. e-commerce sales, excuse me, totaled 959.9 million. That's a lot. Now, women control or influence 85% of that spending. So we're talking about our managers of money, our moms. We're talking about our household procurement specialists. These are the ones that are making all the buying decisions for the family. Okay, so that 85% is $815.9 billion. So my question is, why are online shopping solutions ignoring the very unique way that women shop? Well, have I got something to tell you. Bab lets the user put items from different online stores in one place in a big ass bag. So it's very simple to use. You get to create a Bab bag, much like you'd create a Pinterest board can add items to that bab bag, and then you can view and share the bab. And I want to show you in real time how easy this is to do. Um, I'm kind of obsessed with this store right now. I like to shop online a lot. But it's fall time, fall wardrobes. Um, let's say I want to look at jumpsuits. So all I would do is just click and shop as normal. I say that, but the internet here does not like me. I will come back to that then. Is it? Oh, she's right. Okay. Well, I like jumpsuits, and I think this one's pretty cute. So I'm shopping. I'm trying to figure out what to get for my fall wardrobe. You can simply click on the item, and if you notice, the little add to bab button pops up. It just floats over on the side, and you can easily just pick the color, size, whatever you want. Click your button. It says item added successfully. As you see, I'm working on lots of things. <laughs> but uh, I don't know, maybe I want to wear this for my family photos. Once you add this update, you can click on your little eyeball and you can see everything that I've been looking at. Um, what's equally nice is you can easily share this or if I'm ready to go ahead and buy, I can click on the item and it'll take me back to that particular page. So very fun, very easy to use. Okay, so let's talk about the features that BAB has. First one is individual user login, so that way you can kind of go back easily from your mobile application to your desktop, a parking lot. And think about this as a little waiting room for items. So instead of having to decide which BAB bag do I want to put that shirt in, you don't. You can just let it sit in the little waiting room. Um, shopping rewards, that's something online shoppers expect. So this is money back for purchases that you are going to make anyways, right? iOS and Android app, mobile apps are great. That's how the majority of browsing is actually done. Um, a, registry, a registry, excuse me, and wish list feature, um, self-explanatory, one touch checkout. So what this means is you solve different items from one store, being able to click on that store and have all those items loaded into that shopping cart on that store. So all you got to do is like click your button, check out. And then, of course, an affiliate dashboard. So while users are very important, the revenue model for BAB is actually an affiliate revenue model. That means the stores are our customers. So it's really important to give them access to customers and access to push out coupons and sales notifications to you. All right. We are pre-revenue, but we have some big-ass accomplishments. So let me tell you about them. 
The first one is we've got a working MVP. It's my Google Chrome extension. It's great. We've got 35 beta users. And we received $5,000 from the builders and backers, pre-idea accelerators. So that money was really integral in getting that, um, that MVP built. And then we also participated in the I2E E3 program, which is really helpful it's with us finding product market fit and kind of figuring out where we needed to focus. Um, we've got 30 user interviews with our target market. And we have a group of Instagram creators who are like, going to work with us for launch. And then 83 subscribers on our email list. So I wanted to kind of put this in perspective for you guys for a second. Um, I mentioned that the affiliate model um, is how we're going to create money. So with all the statistics and kind of how much people normally shop, we're looking at about $7.52 a user okay, per month. At 25,000 users, which is where we project to be in two years, you're looking at $2.3 million annualized. To put that in perspective, Honey has 17 million users, so I feel like I could be rich <laughs> just from shopping. All right, and how is BAB different from everything else that's out there? So first thing, we're a true universal shopping cart. There are other options, but you can't add items from every store, right? You can only shop at certain places. I don't know about you, but I want to shop wherever I want to shop. And maybe I want to support black-owned businesses. I want to be able to add items from that store. So that's really important. Mobile app, as I explained, that's where all the browsing happens. But interestingly enough, you got to have a desktop app, too, because people like to purchase from their desktop. That's where most purchasing happens. Um, the registry and wish list feature, and then also the retailer dashboard, which really is very important to having a good relationship with those e-commerce retailers. All right, guys. Who is building this product? Well, you have myself, CEO and founder. Um, I come from an IT project management background. I used to work at OU in IT for about five years. Previous small business owner. And also, um, what I think is the most important is I am the customer. I built this out of a need that I had, and after talking to other moms and realizing they had the same issue, um, I'm a woman. I'm the main buyer for a family of four. And I do a little side work, I say that, for the clothing company Express. I'm a part of their MVR community, and I get to give feedback on their advertising and clothes before they even hit the store. It's how I stay in nice clothes. Um, and then my COO, Andrew, and he has over 10 years' experience really in the e-commerce space and affiliate marketing space. He's a licensed CPA in the state of Oklahoma. And as you can see, his education speaks for itself with his MBAs and his, um, his uh, master's in data science from OU. All right, guys, how can you help me? This is my big ask. So the first thing you can do, yes, <laughs> you, I'm really leaning into it here, can you see? Um, the first thing that you can do is actually go follow Bab on Instagram. We're on Instagram and we're on TikTok. It's at Bab underscore shopping. The second thing that you can do, and the QR code will be on the next slide, and the website's down at the bottom, is you can sign up as a user for BAB. We're in beta, so we're rolling out these features that you saw on there, but if you want to give your feedback, if you want to be part of the next big thing to come out of Oklahoma, there you go. And then the last thing is connecting with micro-influencers. Who do you follow on Instagram? Who's, um, whose opinion sways you? I want to know. Just DM, DM me their profile. All right, guys, and that is all I have. Thank you for your time. We're ready for questions. I'm super loud. Here we go. Okay. Um, so it's Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Hello, I'm a cybersecurity yes, professional. I'm a nerd about it. I have a question about PII. What personal identifiable identifiable information are you collecting? And it sounds like you're talking about connecting with the like the the marketing. What's the word I'm looking for? The affiliate marketing. Uh -huh. yes. So if I'm the app user, mm -hmm. I'm probably also part of the product. So as a user, what do you know about me? What do you share about me? And what compliance frameworks are you subject to? to keep it all between us? First of all, that's a really good question. I thought you might appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So right now, uh, none. We're not connect, uh, co yeah, collecting anything. We are in the process of creating our user logins, and we're doing that through Auth0 or Auth0, which you're probably familiar with. So our thought was, let's use a product that's already out there um, that kind of has all of the um, security measures in place. So, but most likely what we'll be collecting about you will be your name, um, but that's just for us. And just really like the, the shopping behavior, that's what stores wanna know. Have you shopped at REI in the past 30 days? Okay, are you interested in camping things? Great, we're gonna, you know, as um, champs or whatever other outdoor store, like we're gonna try to push you a coupon. So, does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. I have two questions. Oh. The first question is around your marketing strategy. So getting ready for Black Friday, yes. what are you preparing to ensure more users for, you know, the, or, and Cyber Monday, the largest days of the year for shopping? And the second one, again, in your marketing strategy, are you looking for um, setting up a table at exclusive women large events such as Sarah Jakes Roberts, Women Evolve, or Essence Fest? So I'll answer your first question, I mean your second question first. I am not preparing to set up a table right now. <laughs> Talk to me about that next year. Um, we're still in beta and I'm really wanting to get feedback on the features that we're rolling out and make sure that's what the uh, general public at large wants, right? Um, to answer your first question, what we're planning on doing is, I mentioned on one slide that we had um, an Instagram list of like 20 creators, and so we plan to work with them. The goal is to really have them display to their audience how they use BAB. So maybe they're a mom, and maybe they're shopping for their toddler's birthday party, and they have all these items from these different stores, and they put this in their BAB bag, and they're showing that on their Instagram or on their TikTok. So that's our big kind of marketing plan. I really want, and if you actually go follow uh, me on TikTok, the latest one, or Instagram, the latest reel I have really shows me how I used it. Um, and how I do use it. So that's pretty much our big marketing plan is to really um, use micro-influencers in their audience. Hi, Sky. Hi, good morning. <laughs> For the influencers that you're working with, is there a number of followers that we need to have to be a part of that? And can we recommend ourselves? <laughs> um, yes, you can. I so, recommend Sky. <laughs> first of all, you're already on my list. We've already talked, so uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> but second of all, um, so research really shows that micro-influencers have like the biggest kind of um, engagement. And so my understanding, um, you guys also like the word creator, not influencer, so apologies. Micro-creators will call you. Um, <laughs> we're talking about anywhere between like that 10,000 that 10,000 follower to about 25,000 follower range. And I've been using influence.co to kind of like find my people and stalk them and reach out to them. Thank well, you, real, qu real quick, I would like to know how many in this room are micro creators? Because it looks like M is even looking for some people with social media influence. You so raise, your hand. raise your hand proudly, please. Because <laughs> I know there's a couple okay. of you in here that are being shy, but okay. marketing is where people struggle. And so knowing we have great people who could help, if you can't be that creator to work with them, you may know of other people because you're all kind of in the same. So if your face are different hand. than mine. <laughs> if you raise your hand, there's my phone number. You can text me your handle. You can go on Instagram and you can DM me. All those things. Hi. I don't have a question, but just appreciation. <laughs> oh, okay. uh, that was a beautiful presentation. Oh, thank you. And phenomenal delivery. I'm like, I'm, uh, I'm blown. Oh, thank you, because I was nervous. <laughs> Yes. Can I call? Can I just call you? Okay. Oh, go ahead. Big Daddy. <laughs> Big Daddy. Yeah. Can I call you that? Yes. Every. I mean, it's yeah. It actually started from two little girls that camped with us. That's great. They couldn't say Nels, so they would just be like Big Daddy, and it just stuck. Um, my question is, what access do I have for shops? Is it all kind of any shop online I can access and use that through Bab? So right now, any Shopify hosted store, any store on the Shopify platform, which is the largest 
e-commerce platform there is, by the way. Um, all of those work with our app. And then we took the top 200 e-commerce stores and have them on there. And if you go to a store that for some reason isn't working, at the top it just says request to add store. And you click that little button and it sends me um, like a little thing on um, Slack and it sends my developer something and then we can, we can get it working. That's awesome. Thank you. Is it in works to uh, incorporate a shop local concept? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So funny you should mention that. <laughs> funny you should mention that. Um, I've had the most success um, just literally walking the main streets of Norman and like walking into shops and talking to the business owners. And so that's actually part of the concept, especially with the shop local Saturdays, to go ahead and create a bad bag that's maybe Norman Main Street or OKC, um, you know, like certain areas and have items from their stores, maybe the top three that they sell online. Um, so yes, that's definitely in our, our little marketing plan. I may be scope creeping you, so feel free <laughs> to say no. Um, but you mentioned, that. what if I want to go shop at a black owned business? Or mm -hmm. what if I want to shop at a queer owned business? Is there, um, is there a plan for kind of a directory of these businesses? Or is that kind of scope creep? It's a little bit scope creeping, but it's OK. Because there are actually a lot of other apps and companies and things that you can kind of like determine how you want to shop. And so my goal eventually is to just have integrations. So like integrations with Pinterest, because I love Pinterest, guys. Ugh. And <laughs> you know, maybe there's an integration um, opportunity there later for an app or a business that already does that. I like it. One more question from the audience. Hi. Uh, Hello. Uh, I wanted to ask, what are your are you like gonna expand outside the U.S. market as well? Eventually. Eventually. But I gotta I gotta get the U.S. market first. <laughs> <laughs> What's I'm interesting about that though is uh, online shopping and just e-commerce in general is really huge in India. Yeah. So I'm and, from India. Huh? Okay. Okay. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so so you already know. So that would outside of U.S. like it's funny you asked that. That would be like the next thing. The next thing. Okay. Looking forward to it. Okay. <laughs> I will call you. <laughs> uh, just feedback. I already like your user ability because I scanned that and I don't have time to sign up, but it said remind me later. And I clicked on that and it auto populated my email and I was like, that is exactly what I need. So thank you for that. <laughs> You're welcome. I just want to say I have like a, the best developer and COO ever. So <laughs> the dream. Right. Yeah, but I, I need him full time, y'all. I need money too. I want him full time. <laughs> <laughs> so our last question, I know you can bring up the, the last slide if you want again, unless there's something else you would like to ask, but what can the community do for you? This is what you can do. Follow me, sign up, connect me with micro-influencers. And seriously, everyone who raised their hand, y'all better be in my DMs by the end of the day. Thank you so much, Shanae. <laughs>Thank you all again for coming. We really appreciate you spending your morning with us again every second Wednesday. Um, I also do want to welcome, we do have some special guests who are joining us through the OUICCW uh, exchange program. So if I could have the four of you raise your hand. Um, they are joining us from India. And then I think we have somebody from Sri Lanka and... And from Pakistan, yes, Pakistan. So um, they would like to get to know all of you a little bit more. They work in their entrepreneurial ecosystems with incubators and organizations that are hosting international and national events. So please connect with them. Uh, it looks like we might even have like an India connection that could get started right away. Um, so uh, we hope you do look up at um, our... OKC Medweek events. There are still more events happening this week. We have Sky. Did Sky just leave? Sky just left, but she uh, is doing a, an inclusive marketing workshop today. 
tomorrow. Um, and they're, I'm going blank on all the events. Uh, the Henrietta Foster Center is a new multicultural business center that's opening up on the northeast side. They're having a listening session to get more information and feedback from the community. Um, we're encouraging everyone to go to Scissor Tail Farmers Market this weekend, shop local, so shop minority owned businesses this week. That's really a big way that you can help support people in our community is making a conscious effort to say, I'm going to go to this Latino business for Hispanic Heritage Month, help put money into their pockets, go to an LGBTQ organization, shop veteran and women-owned businesses. So there's a variety of ways that you can help by making that decision of not necessarily going to Amazon, because I know it's super easy for all of us. I'm just as guilty of making that choice to buy a nice gift, maybe for the holidays for somebody now, um, on a you know an immigrant business, because um, we have some great businesses locally. So thank you all again, and uh, we will see you next month.